The last episode, we visited uh, a guy that became a friend of ours, Tom Cross, in Midland, Texas. And he had a bunch of cool Fords, and we polished the fender on one of the Ford station wagons, a 62 Ford wagon. It was red. So he gave us a location nearby in the same zip code that we're going to go check out right now. So come along for the ride. Well, that was easy. Drove about 15 seconds. This, this guy was an Oldsmobile enthusiast, and his name was what? Ted McVeigh. Ted, okay. And he passed away how long ago? He passed away last October from cancer. Uh-huh, man. And he was as much an Olds guy as you are a Ford yeah, guy, huh? Diehard Olds guy. Uh, this is an Olds 88. It's, we're looking at two rare early 50s Oldsmobile side by side. That That's a rare car. I mean, you see Chevys like this, and once in a while a Pontiac, but well, you don't see Oldsmobiles like this. Now, this is a metal woody. You know, it looks like a woody. It's, it had painted uh, on the side wood grain. I think that they had wood on the interior. At least the Chevys did. They had wood trim around the windows and things. So, I, interestingly, the Chevy, early 50s Chevys wagons, even though they were metal, had wood on the interior. I'm not sure if this did or not. So, this is probably a 50, 51. Somewhere. This is, I believe, a 50. 50. And is it like a 303 cubic inch? Yeah, I believe that's right. Huh. Alright, so if you're watching this video and I'm making mistakes, excuse me, because yeah. I can't know everything about everything, but I try. So no engine in this thing. Um, but boy, that's a rare car. Shoot. It looks like somebody started to work on this car. The dash looks like it. Look at the look at the back of that leather seat there vinyl or whatever it is, but that's pretty good shape. So it's got a seat here, a seat here. Ford's had a third seat. I'm not sure if GM cars did or not. I'm waiting for something to jump out at me. Look at his old tube radio. And see lots of the trim that's missing on the car on the outside is inside here. But there's linkage that when you drop the tailgate down, these lights stay horizontal. So even when the tailgate's down, the lights, so people behind you can still see your brake lights, taillights, blinkers. That's a neat car. Uh, this is an Olds 88 as well. This is a business coupe. It looks to be a well-optioned car. It's got full wheel covers. Well, it's got the factory wheel cover and then a, a chrome trim ring. It has uh, Futurematic means an automatic transmission. You know, the automatics were relatively new at this time. It has a sun visor over the windshield. Now, this is a business coupe. You don't see many business coupes, but it's got the short back seat area and a longer deck. And salesmen use these often to put sales materials, suitcases in the back. Still nothing's jumped out at me. I'm, I feel pretty lucky on this episode. There's a back seat back here. Some business coupes had no back seats. This has got an automatic. Well, let's see if something jumps out of here. There you go. So, you know, is it a Rocket 88? I don't know, but it's an overhead valve V8. Probably a Rocket 88. It's got a strange looking two barrel carburetor. Probably has some kind of odd air cleaner that goes with it. Ford, during this time, had a flathead V8, which the technology was back to 1932. So Ford was so far behind, say, Oldsmobile and Cadillac and Chrysler, who had the Hemi. Ford was so far behind these cars because their horsepower at that same time would have been 100, and the Mercury's would have been about 110 horsepower. And this probably has 180 horsepower, uh, which is what the Cadillac and the Chrysler had. So Olds is probably about the same. So if you were drag racing or stock car racing, uh, you know, you wouldn't buy a Ford to go stock car racing or drag racing with. You'd, you'd buy an Olds or a Caddy or a uh, Chrysler. And here again is that jet style. If you look at the logo up front, it's got a globe. 
you know, with wings around it. So everything about this thing was modern. World War II was over and new designs were, you know, coming back. Uh, America was being introduced to new body styles, new drivetrains. And this again is an 88. You can see the logo back here, 88. And I suppose this means rocket 88, because here's a rocket in the 88. So <laughs> it's kind of a legendary car. So there's no air cleaner back here. But there are a few parts, interior door panels, I guess. Now just imagine how old that tire is, you know, bias ply tire. It's got the little diamond marks on there. Uh, it says double eagle. So it's probably a good year. All right, so this is this car would be a nice restoration project. It looks to be complete. We've decided that this is probably a 49 or a 50. So we we uh, went to the Haggerty valuation guide here, and in concourse condition, if this is a 49 and it does have a 303 V8 in it. It would be $26,000, the value of this car in concourse condition. In excellent, $17,600. In good condition, eleven seven, dollars And in fair, $7,900. This, this is, I guess, fair or maybe below fair, because I think fair has to run. Even though this is complete and solid, it's not a runner. So it's, it's worth less than $7,900, according to the Haggerty price guide. It'd be a you know, an, an unusual project car. It's complete. You wouldn't need many parts for it. We looked under the hood. It, it looks to be sound. And the family of the gentleman who collected these cars, who's now deceased, the family has decided it's probably best to find a new home for these cars. So they are uh, available. They're for sale. And, you know, I'm hearing maybe 5000 uh, bucks for these cars. I think that's a good buy. Uh, we know that this one is worth 7900 if it were running. I'm not sure what this one's worth. It's, it's a pretty rare car. We'd have a hard time investigating that. But if you wanted a wagon or this, this club coupe, uh, you could do far worse than, than buy these for in the area of five grand. These are the cars that are sitting here under the shed, uh, shed roof. But I, I, I think he's got a whole field full uh, behind this building. So we're gonna go back there now and see what there are. Okay, it looks like uh, Oldsmobile heaven, my God. Look at all this stuff. This is totally by coincidence, but here's the aluminum block 215 V8 that was developed by Oldsmobile, I guess, in 62. And by coincidence, there's a Land Rover over here what year it is, I have no idea. But the engine in here is a variation of that motor that was used 62, 72, 82, 92, well, probably 40 years later. A GM sold the rights to this motor, an aluminum V8, to British Motor Company, which used it on a bunch of models, Triumphs and uh, MGs, but they also used it in the Land Rover. And, and here, you, here you got a variation of that same motor 25 feet away from the uh, car that it was developed for. A lot of four doors here. All right, under the roof here. Ah, oh, we got some muscle car stuff here. So is this a Roadrunner? Yeah, we got a Roadrunner. All right. No drivetrain? Huh, it has torsion bars in the front. So what was this, a 383? It has some Bondo on it. So this car was rusty at one time, which I guess it still is. Automatic on a column. It could be a 383, or did they come with 318s in Roadrunners? I guess so. That scares me right there. In fact, it's over here too. So this can't be a Texas car, I would say. Look at this rust. It's got aluminum slotted wheels all around, and it's got that phasing stripe, the black black, red, black, red going down here. I just don't want to touch it. So, you know, this, this could be a telltale sign for real problems, or it might just need new front fenders. I'm just wondering, there's a big hole cut out over there, and I'm wondering 
why that would be. Somebody cut a hole in the in a fender, but it's too far forward to put headers out of there, so I don't know what that means. And here's a Dodge Dart. Or as Tom and Ray Yahtzee used to say, a Dodge Dat. It's got big wheels and looks like it's got dual exhaust. The exhaust coming out this side, probably one not coming out that side. So it's got gauges, it's got a bench seat, automatic on a column with a spongy little steering wheel, one of those little JC Whitney uh, accessories. The wheels in the back seem wider than stock, so they're probably off a wagon or something. <laughs> two door hardtop. So the, I think the V8 in these things was a 273. There we go. So it, it could be a 273, or somebody could put something else in there, like a 318 or a 340, I suppose. It's a, it's a big four barrel on there. So this has uh, doesn't have headers, but it's got dual exhaust. Doesn't have power steering, doesn't have power brakes. It's, so this is a just a kind of a strip car, but it would have been a car that would have been a cool drag car back in the day. And it would be a, an unusual street car now because, I mean, when was the last time you, you saw a, a nice clean Dodge Dart? So, you know, Tom's guessing they'd want like 4,500 for it. I think that's a good buy. You probably get this thing running in a weekend. All right, so interestingly, here's another wagon. This is a Pontiac, but it's the same body as that other car. Uh, GM did a lot of badge engineering, I guess you'd call it. You can see this car does have wood inside it. The other car, I don't know what happened to the wood, but this wood inside here, door panels and trim, it's peeling apart. It'd be a lot of work to remake the, the, uh, the wood interior for this. But see, there's a Pontiac 8. Now, I, if I'm not mistaken, this would be a straight 8, wouldn't it? We, we could took, take a look at that. There you go. So this probably was the same year or within a year or two of that Oldsmobile. But you can see the Oldsmobile was so far advanced over a Pontiac or a Chevy at the time. This still had an 8, but it was a straight 8, flathead. And the other, the Oldsmobile we saw a few minutes ago had a V8 overhead valve. Somebody was working on this car. There's a broken ratchet wrench. Aftermarket air cleaner. Aftermarket air cleaner. You'd have to punch a couple of holes in there. So it, it, it's a two barrel downdraft. So, you know, I guess, I guess if you bought this and that as a package, this could be a parts car for that to some extent. But you can see the Oldsmobile had those kind of a, a longer headlight trim. The Pontiacs and the Chevys had just a round headlight, but different grill for sure. Now we're, here we have a Dodge. This was registered in 1990. That's a Hemi. So that was a small Hemi. Smaller than the Chryslers, smaller than the DeSotos. And I'm not sure, they had something called a Red Ram. I can see some lettering on there, and that's what it is. That's a Red Ram Hemi. So I don't know what the cubic inches is. It's a 274. Don't yell at me. Don't send me bad you know, notices. But this was a hot rod. This is the kind of car you'd buy and race in NASCAR back in the day. There was a, a, a Dodge 500, a D500, that you'd buy stripped down. Had no air conditioning. It had no power steering. had nothing. And you'd, you could buy it and race it in NASCAR on the beach. This is a four-door model, and it's got a lot of accessories. So uh, this, this wouldn't be a good race car. But you know, I wouldn't restore this car four-door, but I'd take that engine out and put in a 32 Ford High Boy and be the cat's meow. So this is probably a typical scene in Texas of cars that are pretty solid. Uh, paint's kind of worn off because of the beating sun and the, and the wind and the sand, but lots of four-doors, lots of cars you wouldn't spend time on because they're just not worth the effort. The, the, the resale value of the cars is just not there for a four-door or some of these lesser cars. So, but we're in Texas. It's a, it's a land where there's lots of good cars that don't rot away like they do in the north. So if you live near here, happy hunting.